died, went back again. I still feel like a bit of a newcomer to the whole world of YouTube content creation. I'm still learning the trade, so I'm always on the lookout for new medical channels. And initially, I didn't think there were that many medics on YouTube, but with your help, I've actually decided to compile a list of medical YouTubers and it turns out there are way more than I expected. I put a request on my community tab and I got hundreds of replies, which I've meticulously sorted through to bring you this 2019 autumn, aka fall, compendium of medical YouTube. Now, if I miss anybody out, I apologize in advance. It's due to the vagaries and the mystery of how the YouTube search algorithm works. Um, don't get mad, but do get in touch by commenting below with any omissions you think I've made. However, some of the omissions are entirely deliberate. And this is because I don't want to feature anybody who is peddling quackery like vaccine falsehoods. Um, anyone who's viewed this channel before knows that I dislike nothing more than a medically trained professional promoting pseudoscience because I think the damage they do is exponentially greater than when others say it. Um, but in keeping with the policy I've got in this channel, I'm not going to single anybody out. I was initially going to do this as a kind of fun tier list, but there are just way too many. So instead, I've made some completely arbitrary and utterly vague categories that I'll go through one by one. And at the end, we will then ascend Mount Olympus to meet the Olympians, the gods of medical YouTube. We begin with the vloggers and career coaches, people who explain what being a doctor entails, educate students and fellow healthcare professionals alike. Kevin Jabal's Med School Insider is a huge channel dedicated to helping medical students. Kevin's also got his own vlog channel with a great feature where he profiles different medical specialties. America Revere does the same thing along with study tips and builds herself as America's most unorthodox medical student. A bold claim. Other medical students include Fitness to Practice, Kenji Tomita, Maha.com, Lauren Din, Rashid, Anas Noor Ali, and Sunni Sun, all of whom make me feel intensely old and terminally uncool. Siobhan is Violin MD, the kind of doctor you want looking after you if you're admitted. She's a Canadian internal medicine resident with a brilliant channel explaining many aspects of being a doctor. If you transplant Siobhan to the UK, you get Sarah Nichols. When I watch their uplifting and fun videos, it almost makes me want to um, think about smiling. It's just um, something I've never done. But that's how nice and positive they are. Antonio J. Webb talks about life as a surgeon, so does the guy with the coolest name in surgery, Buck Parker. Ajay Kailash is a dermatologist who makes lots of different videos, and he looks like a CSUN Zari, but that's okay, because he's pretty funny. You must recognize! Dr. Cellini is a radiologist. Chidera Ota is a pretty inspirational and brand new doctor. Alex over at Brainbook is a neurosurgeon and is the only doctor I will accept has a better chat-up line than a cardiologist. And there's also Medumentary. Mama Dr. Jones is an obstetrician and gynecologist who talks about her career and her life juggling four kids alongside her work and is very funny, reacts to medical TV shows and the like. Jenny Lee also talks about balancing family with life as a doctor. David Hinden focuses on tech and surgery. That medic and the junior doctor, fellow Londoners, NHS doc, an ophthalmologist. Dr. Raga is a surgical resident. Cedric Jamie Rutland is a critical care doc. Dr. Crystal does family and sports medicine. Jane and JD need to update their banner because they're no longer medical students, they're doctors. And the med bros get bonus points because in their banner, they feature a pun. We pivot into slightly more general advice for students, not just medics, starting with the great and powerful Ali Abdal. I think I'm at least 10 years older than Ali. When I was at his stage of my training, I was utterly clueless, and outside work, I was normally face down at the end of the bar, but this guy has a thriving productivity tech and study advice channel, his own business, plays better piano than me, is way smarter than me, and has the sexiest baritone since Barry White. Ali's transatlantic counterpart could be Jamie at the Strive to Fit, who covers similar topics and is also multi-talented. Yes, I hate them both. Next comes proper medical education designed for people studying some aspect of medicine. Two of the biggest guns in the business are Khan Academy and Osmosis, both of which have a wealth of educational material. If they didn't have huge teams behind them, they would be surefire Olympians for the end of the video. But I decided to make that more about individuals and seeing as it's my video, I can make the rules. I also decided not to include institutional channels like medical schools or the New England Journal and so forth, but obviously they're worth checking out as well. Registered Nurse RN has a huge range of nursing skills and advice. Geeky Medics, Medcram, Paul Bolin, Dr. Najib, Larry Melik, 
John Campbell, all make superb videos for students of medical sciences. These guys are the real stars as they're helping create future generations of healthcare professionals, unlike, say, channels that make useless videos about medical puns. And all of the following also belong in this category. Medicurio, TV, Sam Webster and the Noted Anatomist for Anatomy, Medicosis Perfectionalis, Dr. Vikram, Minas, The Washington Deceit for Histology, JJ Medicine, LY Med, Med School, oh, Med School, <laughs> I get it, Last Second Medicine, Miss Medicine, Nabil Ibrahim, Virtual Medics, Surgical Tech Tips for anyone who works in the OR, Ninja Nerd Medicine, Clinical Problem Solvers, one Minute Medical Terminology, and Errol Osdalga at Stanford Medicine 25. For Pharmacology, The Drug Classroom, Echocardiography, Julian Vega Addai, Radiology Nation and The Radiology Channel are pretty self-explanatory. My Buddy Corporis does Physiology and Anatomy videos, but also some really slick medical history. For more medical history, check out Lindsay Fitzharris. Prep Medic and Skinny Medic are paramedics with an emphasis on action. Then we've got explainer videos, people who take a complicated topic and make it easy to understand. York Cardiology is a British cardiologist like me, but actually makes useful videos, answering lots of common questions about the heart. I'm going to put my friend Science with Katie here in explainers, but I suspect she might go into the vlogging medical student category soon as she's about to start medical school. I'm sure a lot of people will want to follow her journey from working in biochemistry lab to becoming a doctor, prostatepedia. F. Perry Wilson has a criminally underwatched channel for the quality of his videos, perhaps because they're very short, which I think is a great selling point, and the algorithm doesn't really favor them. Miles Power has a superhero's name and is even more dedicated to debunkery than me. Anyone who calls out chiropractic and homeopathy is okay in my books. Next comes fitness and diet, two topics that often go hand in hand, and there's lots of stuff out there. Michael Grieger at Nutrition Facts covers loads of diet-related topics and seems to talk a lot of sense. Stephen Gundry and Dr. Sam's Health look at a lot of hot topics like fasting or keto. Richard Bernstein, Ken D. Berry, Paul Saladino all go in the meaty category. And Goji Man and Dr. Vinas from the opposite, more vegan side of the coin. It's funny how the carnivores and the vegans both make exactly the same health claims. It's almost as though meat and vegetable might be good for you. But I'd never say anything like that on YouTube. Talking of balanced diets, Hazel Wallace and my friend Rupi at the Doctor's Kitchen are both super big deals on Instagram but have a YouTube presence as well. A few channels focus on fitness, like Barbell Medicine, Bob and Brad, who are physiotherapists and huge, Brian Sutterer, Chris Rayner, all explain sports medicine topics to a general audience. As someone who uses sports injuries as a calendar, I find their stuff really interesting. When did I get married? Um, oh, it's when I had my knee operation, 2010. Mike Diamonds and Sarah Siena are UK doctors who've also got some serious gains. The anabolic doc. Dr. Levi Harrison offers something pretty cool. He's an orthopod that specializes in gaming and esports. Although I'm sure a lot of you fellows already have pretty strong wrists at least unilaterally. I had to limit this to English language channels. However, there are clearly loads in other channels. I've seen great ones in Spanish, Portuguese, Polish, Malay. Let's just take a look at how many Indian medical channels there are. Oh, bang. Mais je voudrais mentionner trois chaînes françaises que j'aime bien, appelées Primum non nocere, Asclepius et dans ton corps. Premium non nocere en particulier est vraiment superbe. J'ai été flatté quand mes followers ont comparé nos chaînes, mais comme tout ce que font les Français, c'est juste un peu mieux que les Anglais. Moving more into mental health, please forgive any gaps in this section. If I included all of neuroscience, it would be another few hundred people. So I've concentrated on those channels that are more related to therapies. Tracy Marks is an experienced psychiatrist, Todd Grande. Uh, my friends Ali and Micah over at Neurotransmissions make awesome videos about therapy as well as neuroscience. So, you want to have sex with your mother. Katie Morton, you probably already know, mental health with Dr. Elliot from the UK and Ali Matu from the US. Well, despite my polite and frankly entirely reasonable requests, the people of London still haven't got my message about avoiding heart attacks when I'm trying to make YouTube videos. So as a result, it's now several days later, I'm back on the day shift. Um, through a combination of a fever and general lack of sleep, I look like I belong in a clinical waste bin right now, which is rather ironic because the next section is the beautiful people talking about beautiful things. 
Dr. Cat is an Instagram megastar and Beverly Hills plastic surgeon who is very Beverly Hills. Thomas McClellan shows and explains a lot of plastic surgery. There are quite a few popular dermatologists on YouTube, such as David Lim, Sam Bunting, Shireen Idris, Sarah Tonks, and never let it be said that I forgot about Dre. But then there are the other dermatologists who remind me why dermatology was the very first specialty that I excluded when at medical school, because skin is disgusting. Maybe it's some cosmic balance that means that the sheer horror of the things dermatologists deal with on a daily basis results in them also being the best looking out of all doctors. At least that's my theory. Feel free to discuss. The next section I'm really not looking forward to editing. It's what I call the gross out category. There we find Dr. John Gilmore, Medical King, the Toe Bro and the DC Foot Doc have channels about disgusting feet, which if I played to a prisoner would violate the Universal Declaration of Human Rights for cruel and unusual punishment. But people watch this stuff voluntarily. And of course, they're very good at their job. All right, now the moment you've all been waiting for as we come to the big dogs, the overlords, the grade four hypertrophic superior ruberous mega dogs. Yes, the Olympians of the medical YouTube world. You may disagree and please do let us know in the comments, but know one thing that I don't care about your opinion. We begin with Hercules who has to, of course, be the only man who might like chest compressions more than me, Dr. Mike. This is the Greek pantheon, so technically he's Heracles, and indeed he came to fame initially as a god amongst men, hewn of marble on Instagram, but now is very much a YouTuber. I like Mike because if I was that handsome, shut up, I said if, I would have been happy to churn out fluff pieces and become like those cookie cutter bland doctors on daytime TV and remained just the hot doc, but Mike takes on important topics and I think covers them fairly and rationally. He's aware of his huge following and doesn't say anything irresponsible and really tries to highlight quackery. And Mike did something quite rare. There are many big time Instagram doctors who failed to translate to YouTube because once they had to actually speak instead of recycling other people's pictures, posting sappy quotes or pictures of themselves hawking scrubs and how hashtag blessed they are to be a doctor, it became apparent there was nothing to them except a pretty face and an Instagram filter, but Mike's following is now even bigger on YouTube because he's a smart guy that makes excellent videos. Poseidon, God of the Sea, is Strong Medicine, run by Eric Strong, another person to whom I owe a great deal, not only for teaching me medicine over many years via YouTube, but also by being supportive of me when I had no subscribers and showing me the ropes. He has a catalogue of videos as deep as the ocean, and just as sailors pray to be guided safe passage by Poseidon, Eric has steered tens of thousands of people through medical school, which is quite a legacy. Aphrodite is Rhonda Patrick, who focuses on aging and nutrition in particular, and produces longer form content that a great deal of people are keen on. Interviews with experts, explanations of studies, and could she be one of Joe Rogan's most popular multi-appearing guests? I think it is entirely possible. It's entirely possible. Hephaestus was the master craftsman and healthcare triage has crafted such a wide array of videos that I have lost count of how many topics I've wanted to cover only to find that they've already done it. I know I said I was not considering big teams for the Olympians, but the channel from the beginning has been guided and fronted by the brilliant Aaron Carroll, whose writing you should definitely also check out. Hephaestus was also the god of fire and volcanoes, and Aaron certainly rains down righteous anger upon bad medicine, which is something I really appreciate. I mean, I appreciate the, the raining bit, not the bad medicine. Hades is Armando Hasadungan. Armando makes medical illustrations and I've been following him for years, so I'm delighted he's now in the Million Club. There are lots of hand-drawn educational channels out there and Armando is my pick of the medical ones. Great at drawing, great at teaching, works as a doctor. Yes, I think it's safe to put him in the category of people I hate. And I know what you're thinking, how mean of you to make him Hades? Well, duh, Hades was god of the underworld and Armando lives in Australia. Dan, under? Apollo is Ed Hope and his sick notes, my bro from the UK. I didn't think I was a reaction video kind of guy, so when I first watched his channel, I wasn't so sure, but they're just so good. They're really easy to watch 
And I agree with everything he says. He tells me medical stuff that I already know and I still love watching because he does it so well, which is no surprise as he's not only a doctor but an educator in his day job. Apollo was also the god of music. So don't miss the time that Ali Abdal and Ed did this. Athena is amoeba, goddess of wisdom, or in this case, goddesses, the two amoeba sisters. I've got a soft spot for animation and they are the best. Not just medicine, wider biology as well, but always high quality and enjoyable. Think of a cross between the awkward yeti, your favorite biology teacher, and the dano DNA dude from Jurassic Park. Demeter, goddess of fertility, is Lindsay Doe from Sexplanations. I'm British and a prude, so talking about sex on the internet is one of the bravest things I can imagine anybody doing. I'm also a YouTuber, so talking about sex on the internet is one of the bravest things I can imagine anybody doing, as her videos must get demonetized all the time. Which is a comment on YouTube, not on Lindsay herself, who's on a mission to educate the world about sex. This is something that perhaps we take a bit for granted in the West, but even here there are many people who have incorrect beliefs surrounding it, but moreover there are dozens of countries where talking about sex just doesn't happen. And where do people, particularly kids, go with questions? Online. So it's fantastic to have a responsible and reliable resource. Hermes you know as the messenger, and this doctor has a lot of important messages but Hermes was also the Greek equivalent of Loki, the divine trickster and the god of comedy. So it's got to be the I M O G Z to the D O double G M D Z dog M D. Medicine's Weird Al, except angrier and with much less hair. The doc that is a dog is on YouTube, but his main medium is his large Z pack and on Facebook, which is apparently still going. Zubin Demania is a rare thing for a doctor on the internet. He tells it like it is. His wrath is unleashed on the many ills that beset healthcare and takes a look at some of the ways it can be improved. Very funny sometimes, very serious sometimes, and brutally honest, but always on the money. And so we come to Hera, the queen of the gods. And this has to be Dr. Pimple Popper herself, Sandra Lee, who has, I think, the largest subscriber count of any practicing doctor in the world. You already know my views on dermatology, it's not for me, but clearly I'm in the minority as she is a megastar. And she's not in it for the fame, she continues to do and enjoy her work, actually educates instead of just drawing attention to the spectacle of the things she does. She's clearly a dedicated and caring doctor. She's also made a lot of appearances on regular TV, which is apparently still going. Well, that brings me to the end. I hope you've enjoyed this roundup of medical YouTube and the Greek gods at the top of the tree. I've definitely not forgotten anyone. That's right, it's Zeus himself, the god of all gods, the supreme overlord, the one they call the emu that is chubby. It's chubby emu. I've waxed lyrical about why I love this guy in quite an unhealthy way in a previous video, but leaving aside how helpful he's been to me personally, he does more than anyone to communicate the true beauty of the science of medicine, as opposed to simply what the day-to-day -day job entails. He doesn't shy away from really tackling some hardcore physiology topics and yet presents them with such panache, clarity and frankly drama that he pulls in millions for each video on top of being a full-time assistant professor. And it hasn't gone unnoticed that he spawned a lot of copycat videos, including from some of the people mentioned in this video. And emia meaning presence in blood. Hearing how his videos have traveled the world and formed the bases of whole teaching modules from Chicago to China to me demonstrates the power of this website so well. While most of the people on this list post quite regularly, Chubby Emu's videos are like installments of the MCU. Phase one and two were um, interesting, but he really hit his stride in phase three. Just like the MCU movies as well, you have to wait for each episode, but when they come out, the whole world loses its mind. Well, that really is the end. I hope you have enjoyed the list. As I said at the beginning, I genuinely am very sorry if I missed you out or somebody you follow. Do let me know. Oh, oh, sorry, this just in. Uh-huh. We've got one more entry. Yes, we close with Ares, the god of manliness, to sing us out. Because if there is one man to whom we all look up, even Zeus himself, it's Dr. K. Chaudhry, with a bewildering 5,300 uploads 
and taking requests now for your viewing pleasure, the man, the legend, the retired karaoke star celebrated the world over from Delhi to Dublin and Defence Colony to Denver. Take it away, Dr Chowdhury. She was a boy, she was a girl, can I make it any more obvious? He was a punk, she did ballet, what more can I say? He wanted her, she would never tell, secretly she wanted him as well. But all her friends stuck up their nose, and they had problem with his baggy clothes. He was a skater boy, he said see you later boy, he wasn't good enough for her. She had a pretty face, but her was in the space, she had to come down back to earth. 